We're Craig and Kirsty, a British couple who left everything to travel the world in 2020, right before the global pandemic hit. After exploring a few countries in Europe, we're now back in the UK exploring closer to home, before we head off for more international travels soon. Join us as we show you around this corner of the world. It has been a long and testing few months in lockdown ever since Athens but we're back. <laughs> Hello and welcome to our first video in England. Apart from that one when we went to Gatwick Airport and left to travel the world and then the pandemic happened and here we are back in England. That's but I can all in the past now. <laughs> yeah, but I can assure you this video will be a lot more scenic than that video. So today we are in the southwest of England and we're going to go and see a site that we have never seen before and we've driven past it many times on the road and always wanted to see it and so today we're going to go and see Dunster Castle and Dunster Village. So this is our UK series and we're going to go and explore some new places so let's go and check it out. You know how much we love a castle. <laughs> Dunster Castle was first constructed in timber in the 11th century, with the addition of a stone shell keep in the 12th century. The medieval castle walls were mostly destroyed following the siege of Dunster Castle at the end of the English Civil War. In the 1860s, architect Anthony Salvin was employed to remodel the castle to fit Victorian tastes. This work extensively changed the appearance of Dunster to make it more gothic and picturesque. Over the many years, the castle has been expanded mostly by the Luttrell family, who owned the castle from the 14th century until 1976, when Colonel Walter Luttrell gave Dunster Castle and most of its contents to the National Trust. Today, the heart of the modern castle is a manor house, but a few features of the medieval castle remain. These include the great gatehouse and several of the towers in the lower ward, as well as features such as the 13th century gates and various artworks and tapestries. Surrounding the castle, there are approximately 15 acres of garden, with a further 680 acres of parkland beyond this, such as four regions, the South Terrace, the River Garden, the U Bank, and the Keep, which was levelled in 1721 to form a bowling green. The Octagon Tower now houses a historical exhibition. It is absolutely beautiful here in Dunster, all the green around me. I'm not surprised that it's so green because we've been in England now for months in lockdown and we have had so much rain. So it's amazing to see now the fruits of all of that and how gorgeous it all looks here, uh, all the nature and the greenery here. Um, and the entrance to the castle is just over there behind me and it's £10 per person for entry to Dunster Castle unless you're a National Trust member which in England we have National Trust sites all up and down the country and if you're a member you can get into all sites like this for free. We've got such a beautiful day for it. Clear blue skies, the sun is shining. Got these quaint little cobbled streets. You can hear the church bells in the background. This is so British. It's so pretty here. And proof that the sun does shine in England sometimes. It's not always <laughs> grey, like in our video when we first landed back in England. <laughs> <laughs> and it's tied in perfectly with the weekend. Check out the streets of Dunster. greenery and 
the background and all the different colours of greenery. It's amazing. We've just wandered to the other side of the castle and we've come down this beautiful street. I mean, there's lovely cottages there with flowers out the front. They are so cute and beautiful. Um, to find a bridge called Galax Bridge. It's supposed to be an old bridge, a site worth seeing. And we've just come across this ford where the road enters the river. And there's the bridge. So we're gonna cross the bridge and there's a footpath that goes down the other side of the river. Um, so we're gonna explore a bit more. are massive and so are their huge horns. This guy just here, it looks really difficult to eat with those horns getting in the way. Okay, they're getting closer. I think I might move. <laughs> it's just this teeny little fence between us and these giant cows. The cows are chilled, it's fine. doing archery. We have got to race back to the car now because we're about to run out of time on the car park. It was £2.20 for the car park here by the way for two hours. Um, we've already been here for two hours and that's without going inside the actual Dunster Castle. We'd love to go inside but we just haven't got enough time as always rushing around. I'm sure it's absolutely stunning inside because everywhere we've walked around today is amazing but of course we're going to show you it from above. So still going to get to see it. But yeah we are a few minutes over on the car so fingers crossed we didn't get a ticket. Apparently we're not supposed to walk here because there's archery going on but as an older couple we just saw said there's no one stood there with a bow in hand so <laughs> they were like, and the alternative the means a long walk around so we are just going to quickly whip through here and get back to the car. Hopefully we don't become their target practice. <laughs> But back to the car park, all we really need is another hour or so, but the cheapest you can do is £2.20 for two hours. So we're just going to do it so that we can go grab ourselves some lunch and go and enjoy the little village because we walked through speedily earlier and we want to see it and show you guys. So we just add to the car park. Okay, that buys us two more hours. Dunster's very set up around the castle and there's several car parks. We've gone for Dunster Steep Car Park and there's a few shops here, lovely homemade jams and things as well that you can buy. A few shops like an outdoor shop as well and there's also a National Parks Information Centre that you can go to. We're just going to walk around the corner and to the high street. Little tip, if you're coming here and like us you're going to spend a couple of hours then going to the car park we went to, Dunster Steep, is good because you can do two hours to 2.20 but if you are going to come here and spend the day, which I highly recommend because there is so much to do, we would love to have spent longer here um, but if you're going to do that, the best place to park is the National Trust car park because that's £5 for all day or if you're National Trust, like everything, if you've got the membership of National Trust it's free. Check this out for a quintessentially old British high street.
just come along Dunster High Street and we're going to check inside here and try and grab some lunch. A little bit late, but still late lunch, it's better than no lunch. So we found this really nice little place for some lunch and we're sitting out in the back garden and we've just ordered ourselves a sandwich and a cream tea. So for anyone who doesn't know what a cream tea is, you're about to find out. <laughs> so here you go, this is what a traditional cream tea looks like. Scones or scones, depending on where you're from, and jam and cream. So this is how you eat them. Here we go, is it going to go for the cream or the jam first? It's going for the jam. Ooh, controversial. So for those of you that don't know, depending on what county you're from in England, Devon or Cornwall, depends on which order you put the cream and the jam on the scone. We're in Somerset, so we can do whatever we like. <laughs> so here we have the <clears throat> jam and then the cream option. Craig's done it like a pro. Here we go. <laughs> Is it good? Always so good. <laughs> and I've done it the other way around, the cream and then the jam. <clears throat> but not so pro, mine completely fell apart. Because Kirsty is such a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. Lovely little cream tea and sandwich came to just over £16 for the two of us. We did share a sandwich and a cream tea because we didn't want to eat too much. But yeah, so nice. Really highly recommend coming to Locks to get yourself a good lunch if you're in Dunstan. Lovely. And the waitress was so sweet and friendly and the garden was really pretty. Okay, so now we're back out on the beautiful Dunster High Street. Like I said, we've never been here before, but we've been meaning to come here. So yeah, amazing to see how pretty it is and how quaint, it's like going back in time. Um, it's all built around Dunster Castle, which is a 17th century castle, and it just feels very oldie worldy here. And yeah, just it's not too busy today either, which is nice. Really nice. It's Saturday, it's like this. Are we still in England? <laughs> We've absolutely loved our time here in Dunster. We cannot recommend it highly enough. There were so many streets with beautiful little cottages and beautiful flowers and things like that that we didn't even have time to go and see. So you can quite easily spend an entire day here. Yeah, we are such tid optimists. We came for two hours and then had to run back to the car and put another two hours on. And already we're running out of time again. So. <laughs> <laughs> but it's time to jump in the car and head to location number two. Let's go. Let's go. We hope you enjoyed the views of the North Somerset and Devon coast. It's absolutely stunning, really dramatic coastline. The views out across the Severn Channel, just outrageous. If you've never done this drive, I highly recommend it. As you're driving along towards Linton and Limith, on the left hand side, you've just got stunning, lush, rolling hills and stunning topography as you're looking over the land. And then on the right hand side, you have this view. Check out these views! Behind us, just slightly further along the coast towards the west, you've got Linton and Lymouth, and then the coast goes further on to uh, Woolacum and Ilfracombe, and also the southwest coastal path, which just runs along here. And if I spin around, you can see it runs along there as well. 
really want to do this stretch of coastline. And I don't know if you can just see on the horizon there, but that is South Wales. Cardiff is just a bit further up the estuary and Pembrokeshire will be just further out west. We've arrived at our second destination of the day and it's the beautiful villages of Linton and Lymouth. They're both situated in this narrow little valley with this stunning river running through the middle. A few years ago, uh, I saw on Instagram this stunning walk that's around here and that is where we're headed today to go over and do the Valley of Rocks walk again. <laughs> this time we're going to try and do it and get a nice sunset view. Yeah, it's got a quaint little high street with lots of boutique shops and we're just going to go and head over there and take a look. walking through the main high street in Lynmouth and the whole area smells like fish and chips because there's a cute little fish and chip place just behind me. Uh, it's now six o'clock so everything shop-wise is closed, I think. Pretty much everything's closed. Um, but you can still see how cute it all is. We've been here before so we know there's those stunning little shops. Um, but yeah, we're making our way through to the scenic Valley of Rocks walk. This shop is really cute. We've been in here before and bought some gifts. Loads of lovely little trinkets in here. But what we just noticed here, love the sign. All op the opening times, all times are ish. That is literally our slogan. Craig and I are both optimists, And every time we say we're gonna be somewhere at a time, it's always ish, 5.30 ish, six ish. <laughs> so yeah, really appreciate that sign there. good when there is a line like that coming out the door. We would get some but we had a late lunch and we've got a walk to do but maybe if it's open when we come back we can grab some but we're thinking by the time we get back this little place will all be closed up. And just behind the fish and chip shop up there, up there is a funicular that takes you all the way to the top with amazing views. We're going to go to the side of the funicular to do the Valley of Rocks walk.
So this behind me is the entrance to the Linton Lynmouth Funicular Railway that takes you up to Linton. They're beautiful old carriages and it's, it's done really nicely. So it's £3 for an adult, £2 for a child and £1 for a dog. It appears it is open at the moment, so after the lockdown situation and Covid. Here's a nice overview of Linton and Lynmouth. So you can see Lynmouth is down at sea level and Linton is up on the side of the hill. And this is the funicular that takes you from the bottom to the top, from Lynmouth up to Linton. Or you can take this footpath that zigzags all the way to the top. For our first vlogging day for six months, we may have bitten off quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> From Linton, we're walking to the Valley of Rocks Walk. It's not like really clearly signposted, it's kind of between a couple of buildings. There is a sign if you know what you're looking for. Which we vaguely remember doing it from a couple of years ago. Yeah. But yeah, it's a tricky one to find. But we're here now, we're on it, well, we're starting it. It's very uphill. <laughs> it's slightly nondescript, but you basically just follow the coastal path and when you get there you'll know <laughs> it's dramatic so yeah, here we are Just check out this coastal path. It's amazing. You walk up through the wooded area and then you just come out into this view. It's just as amazing as I remember it. Although it's quite it's nice not. because we're here early evening so it's a little bit cooler. Good time to come and do the Valley of Rocks walk. <laughs> so this is the coastal path and we're gonna walk a bit further to the Valley of Rocks. So we have arrived at the Valley of Rocks and just check out these stunning views. It's amazing. One of our favourite places in the UK. It's pretty windy now because it's getting later into the day, but it is stunning. Um, if you're scared of heights, I wouldn't advise coming here and standing on this precarious rock, <laughs> but it does make for the most stunning Epic nice spot. views. The Valley of Rocks is a dry, U-shaped valley that runs parallel to the coast in North Devon, England. 
It is to the west of Linton and is arguably the most spectacular scenic location on Exmoor. It's a popular tourist destination, noted for its herd of wild goats and for its landscape and geology. The 10 km walk takes you through spectacular rocks, tree-covered headlands with a secluded bay and a Victorian folly, with the heathland high above the Valley of Rocks. The walk is fairly easy and the paths are in good shape, plus the entire route has these incredible views over this dramatic landscape across the Bristol Channel. I mean, how is this for a coastal path? It's absolutely stunning. I know I keep saying it, but you take the footpaths from the inland side of the peak of rocks, and then you come out onto the Bristol Channel side and these views. I mean, what more could you ask for? What do you think, wifey? I could spend all day here. There's so many different routes you can take, but this is definitely my favorite. And this lighting, this time of day, it's just the perfect time to be walking here. Just in time for sunset. get in the video. Hey buddy. Mountain goes. I'm sure if we keep walking here. Oh, oh my word. Another one. <laughs> okay so now we're in Narnia. These goats are mental. It's okay goats don't rush. Take your time. Wow the valley of rocks. The gift that just keeps giving. <laughs> this is a whole new way of getting photobombed or video bombed. <laughs> They're so cute. The more of them just keep coming. Another one there. Oh, look at this guy. They are amazing on these steep slopes. The Valley of Rocks is just an incredible place to come and see these amazing views. And now we're going to go and find a spot to go and sit and watch the sunset. Thank you so much for watching our first proper travel vlog here in England, in our own country. We plan to spend the rest of the summer touring the country and showing you some of the amazing places we find along the way. Yeah. <laughs> but we hope you've enjoyed seeing one of our favourite places or a few of our favourite places. And thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you on the next one. Please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Join us next time as we leave England and head over to Wales for some coastal adventures in Pembrokeshire. If you can't wait that long, head over to our Instagram at Tidenot Travellers for daily updates on what we're currently up to and what's coming up in our future videos. So this is the first time we've done a proper vlog in England and um, yeah, definitely getting the whole polite British thing that people talk about. <laughs> I don't know if you saw then, but just everyone stops to wait. And let us like, oh, sorry. Get our shots. Sorry, I'm thank in you, your way. Thank you, thank <laughs> you. I get it, I get it now. I get it. So nice. <laughs> We're just going to walk 
bit further up and into the high street. We're just going to walk around the corner and to the high street. Oh, I'm out of breath, walking uphill <laughs> and vlogging. Yeah. So out of practice. I haven't done this for a while. Yeah. <laughs> We've been in lockdown for ages. It's not been the healthiest of times. <laughs> super unfit and super out of experience. Out of shape. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So we've just come along down to the high street and we're going to go inside here. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Okay. Oh, masks. Masks. <laughs> Cardiff and maybe a long... <laughs> So we've just arrived and parked the car up and we are in Linton and the other side of the river is Lynmouth. Did I get that right? Put the right way around. That's not strictly correct. <laughs> for our first vlogging day for six months, we may have... <laughs> <laughs> point I'm trying to make really. Yeah. <laughs> Brains are fried. <laughs> Saying goodbye. No, vertigo. Let's go. Kirsty's like, oh, should we say goodbye? <laughs> it's not time for goodbye just yet. <laughs>